All right, thank you for joining me again. In this video, we're going to be creating our very first electrical system, and more specifically, uh, a power system. Now, we're going to follow pretty much the same pattern that we did with HVAC, and we'll be placing uh, equipment first. Once we've placed the equipment, we'll place some receptacles in a designated room. Then, I'll show you how to display wiring for documentation. All right, let's get started. All right, again, the first thing we want to do is make sure we're on the correct work set. Currently, we are on the MEP common work set, so we're going to want to change that. We want to be on the electrical work set. So click the active work set and find electrical in the list. Now that we're on the correct work set, we can go ahead and start our electrical system. So if you remember back when we created our HVAC system, you'll remember that we placed equipment first. It's actually no different with the electrical system. We'll start by selecting equipment that we want for our system, placing it, and then actually creating the system itself. So go ahead and switch to the Systems tab on the ribbon, and all the way down on the right-hand side, you'll see the electrical panel. Now, the electrical panel obviously has tools associated with the electrical system, and we are going to want to choose the electrical equipment button first and foremost. The equipment that we want to place first is an electrical panel. Obviously, the electrical panel is going to hold all of the circuits that we create for our system. So, if we go to the type selector, we can go ahead and choose the correct panel for this. It looks like the panel that's in the type selector currently is the one that we want, but let's just go down the list to make sure. All right, yeah, that's the one that we want, so let's go ahead and choose it from the type selector. Now, you'll notice as I move my cursor into the drawing window that I get this little symbol on it. It's the universal sign for you can't do this, or a circle with a line through it. So if you notice up on the ribbon in the contextual tools, there is one that is highlighted. It says place on vertical face. There are a couple of other there's as well, like place on face or place on work plane. Essentially what Revit is telling us is this particular family that we're using needs a surface to host to. If I don't have a surface, Revit's not going to allow me to place it. So as I move my cursor closer to a vertical face, you'll see that the panel appears. Then if I pull back away from the vertical face, it disappears again. Now, I'm just rolling my mouse wheel in and out to zoom in and out and depressing it to pan. All right, now, because I know that this panel is a surface-mounted panel, it doesn't want to live inside of the wall, right? So it looks like it's kind of backwards. Now, if I hit my space bar one time, it'll actually flip it around to the correct uh, direction. Once it's facing the right way, I can go ahead and left click to place it. Then again, I can hit the escape key twice to get out of the command. All right, with our panel board placed, we're now ready to place our receptacles in the room that we have selected for that. Let's pan all the way back over to space number one. So again, on the systems tab, all the way on the right hand side in the electrical panel, you'll see a little button that says device. Go ahead and click the little drop down just below that, and that will reveal a list of devices to choose from. After we select the device, we have to choose the correct device from the list in the type selector. In this uh, sample project, there are only a couple of different types of receptacles, so it's pretty easy to choose, but this list can get quite long. Let's go ahead and choose the standard receptacle. Again, after we choose the receptacle, you'll notice up on the ribbon, the contextual tools are telling us that we need to place this particular element on a vertical surface. I'm going to go ahead and start placing my receptacles here. Now, you as the designer have to decide where you are going to place yours. Just go around the room and place a number of receptacles uh, so that we distribute them evenly around the entire space. All right, let's go ahead and escape twice to get out of that command. 
Now here's where it gets fun. Go ahead and select one of the receptacles. It doesn't actually matter which one you select. Once you select it, you'll notice on the ribbon, the contextual tools will be active. On the far right side, you'll see the Create Systems panel and the Power button on that panel. Go ahead and click that. Now that will bring up a set of new contextual tools. On the System Tools panel, we have Edit Circuit, Select Panel, and then Panel up above a little drop-down bar that has none in it at the moment. Now, since we have started to create our power system, we're going to want to edit this particular circuit. So go ahead and click the Edit Circuit button. By default, the Add to Circuit button is selected on the Edit Circuit panel of the Contextual Tools. Now, simply go around the room and select each one of those receptacles until they are all added to this particular circuit. Now, the very last thing that we want to do for this circuit is select the panel. We can do that a couple of different ways. If you click the Select Panel button, you'll have to search around your plan or your project to actually find that panel. Well, we know where that is, and it's pretty easy to find, but an easier way to do it is just hit the little drop down here and it will list all of the panels available for this particular circuit. That's also why we added the panel first. Now just go ahead and choose that panel from the list and then finish editing the circuit. All right, great, that's it. Essentially, you have created your first electrical system. Now, obviously we want it to look a little bit better than this. In most firms, most electrical engineers like to show the wiring connecting from each receptacle and then a home run back to the panel. To do this, simply mouse over one of the receptacles and hit your tab key one time. This selects everything that is connected in this particular circuit. Now, if we zoom out here, you'll notice a big dashed blue line all the way around the receptacles as well as the panel over in the other room. This tells us that we pretty much did everything right and everything is connected to this circuit. Now there's a really fast and easy way to create all of the wiring that we want for this particular system. With the circuit still selected, if you look sort of in the middle of the receptacles in that room, kind of next to the space one tag for the space, you'll notice there are a couple of little symbols that look like wires. All you have to do at this point is select one of those wires, depending on how you want it to look. I'm going to go with the arc wiring because that's the standard in my office. Once I click the symbol, you'll notice that the wiring is now permanent. Now, I know from experience that the engineers in my office, they don't like to see a straight wiring. So I can just grab this one and pull it down and it'll kind of arc it for me. Now, Revit automatically put these little tick marks on the wire. And I know that my standard in our office doesn't call for those tick marks. So there's a pretty easy way to go about removing those. If you select the wire and then right click the wire, in the right click menu, just move down to the select all instances. And we're gonna choose select all instances in view. That will then select all of the wiring in this particular view. With all of them selected, I can go over to the Properties palette and remove those tick marks by setting each one of them to zero. And voila, they are gone. Now the last thing we need to do is tag this wiring so that we know which circuit this home run is for. You do that by going to the Annotate tab on the ribbon and moving all the way down to the Tag panel and choosing Tag by Category from that panel. Now Revit is intelligent enough to know which object you're selecting. So all I have to do is take my mouse, place it over the wire, and click to tag the wire. I'll go ahead and go up to the option bar and get rid of the leader because I don't think we need that. So there you have it, a perfectly good electrical power system. Now join me in the next video where we'll create a panel schedule that will display the circuit information or the circuit that we just created. I'll also show you how to create a lighting circuit similar to the power circuit we just created. Thanks for watching.